Hi, friends. Welcome to yet another episode of The Photo Department. This is my third attempt at recording this portion of the video. <laughs> Let me tell you, moving is tough. Uh, as you'll see, I'm in a different room. This is my new space in LA. So I found out on the second attempt of trying to record this portion of the video that the microphone cable I was using is crap and we couldn't recover the really bad audio. The entire time I was talking, there's like crackly garbage going on over my voice it didn't didn't work out very well i i like hand holding the microphone actually i think it's very um i don't know gives me something to do with my hands james pumphrey from donut media on his shows he hand holds a microphone now and uh i think it's a nice bit of um business kind of looks cool so i'm doing it here we are attempt number three and um i'm a little bit bummed i was gonna use my orange microphone poof because it was before Halloween. This video is supposed to come out before Halloween, but it is actually after Halloween. It's actually November 3rd. It's election day. And we're not going to talk about it. I'm very stressed. What I am going to talk about, uh, I want to get this out of the way at the very top of the video. YouTube's algorithm is weird. And apparently my videos are not showing up for some people. So if you like my channel and you want to help support my channel and make sure that uh, these videos get seen by the most eyes possible, then please go down next to where it says subscribe. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already, but there's a little bell icon. If you click that and hit all notifications, then it will show you every time that I post a video in your feed. And that way you won't miss anything. And it'll also tell YouTube, hey, this guy's channel is worth watching. We should uh, show his videos to more people. Cause that's what I need. I need more people to watch these videos to make it worthwhile because it's very expensive to do and time consuming. I love doing it. It's uh, my favorite thing to do and I wanna keep doing it. So please hit that bell icon, let YouTube know that I'm worth it. Thank you. I am drinking coffee today. This is a very special coffee. This is the first time I'm trying Korean coffee, coffee that is um, roasted in Korea, which is really cool. This coffee is roasted by Fritz in South Korea. And this is an El Salvadorian coffee called Pinares Bourbon Washed. So it's a Bourbon, Bourbon, Bourbon style coffee. It's a washed coffee. It has this cool little information card that comes on the back of each bag of beans and it gives you all this cool information. It tells you where it's from. It tells you um, the varietal, and it tells you the producer. So the producer is Hector Velasquez. That's the guy who owns the coffee farm that grows his coffee. That's really cool. It's also got tasting notes. Lychee, stone fruit, and a syrupy mouthfeel. I would agree with those tasting notes. I thought it was a very smooth cup of coffee. I made myself a Chemex. Chemex is a really good way of making coffee if you want it to be nice and smooth and, and mellow, and you don't want it to be very like bright or crazy. Um, it's a really great way to make coffee. I would have to say syrupy mouthfeel. That's a dead on ringer. And their branding is really cool. I love their branding. I love their uh, drawings and everything. I think it looks really cool. I think it's really eye catching. So if you want to go check out Fritz Coffee, the description has all the information. You should go check them out. Um, I bought this coffee at Kumquat coffee and tea company which is a coffee shop just down the street from where i live i go there all the time because it's literally around the corner and it's a wonderful place they have great coffees they also carry passenger and some other coffees um so i'm probably going to be talking about them fairly often as far as coffee goes cheers mm. so this video is another part of my series that i call social study where i talk to who i think are extraordinary or interesting creative individuals uh, that I know. And uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy as well. Uh, this week we have JP, who is a photographer based in San Francisco. He is a 
film photographer as well. And when quarantine started, he had kind of the same idea that a lot of us had, which was, why don't we do photographs of other creatives or photographers in the Bay Area and um, kind of do like a quarantine series that kind of highlights what creatives are up to when you can't really create much outside or see people or do anything. My name is JP. I'm a photographer. I'm based out of uh, Pacifica, California. I had the same idea that JP had. I wanted to go out and meet people and take photos of them during quarantine and make that a little project. But I thought, you know, everyone's doing it. Who cares? There's going to be an influx of people doing the same thing and no one's going to want to see this stuff. It's just going to be all the same stuff. But after hanging out with JP for a while and watching him make photos and go through his process, it kind of dawned on me that we all have our own perspectives and we all have our own unique um, traits that make our own creative output unique in its own way. So I think that everyone's got their own perspective and their own background, and it really does lend to unique work, even if it's the same as something that someone else has already done. Because at this point, everything's pretty reductive. Everyone's done kind of everything. So it's all about you know the individual and what they can do to make their creative output unique. So JP had reached out to me a couple months ago and asked me if I would be interested in being photographed for his project. And I was like, yeah, I'm down. That sounds cool, man. But then I had the idea of following him around with the video camera and kind of capturing his process. And I asked him if he'd be cool with that. And he was very gracious uh, to allow me to do so. Uh, before I let him take pictures of me, we went out and took photos of two other subjects in Oakland. Uh, it was really cool being around another photographer, especially another film photographer and kind of seeing their process. After JP took my photos, I sat him down and kind of talked to him about his process and, you know, why he decided to do this project. So for this project, I just wanted to um, photograph local artists and kind of talk to them as well about what how this pandemic is uh, affecting them. I came up with this uh, project, like I'm a big fan of self-assigning. And so I realized that uh, there was a lot of local photographers and artists around my area that I was already following on Instagram. So I figured I'd hit them up and ask them um, if I could photograph them. And at the same time, meet them finally um, at, a, at a distance. <laughs> I've been shooting sports photography for about 10 years now. Um, all, all of them like digital. And then finally I dabble into film. Sometime last year, I got a uh, Minolta X700 and a friend of mine recommended a, a Holga, which I didn't even know what medium format was, if you want to count that as a medium format camera, like a little toy camera. Um, and it kind of opened up this world for me and just made me want to shoot a lot more uh, being involved with the whole process of it all. So a majority of the shots I've taken 
are from the uh, Pentax 672 with a 105 lens. I really like that 105 lens. It's uh, very versatile and just a shallow depth of field. Yeah, I, I really like bokeh. <laughs> Anything that would really let me shoot wide open, I'm a big fan of. Lately, I've been shooting a lot of Cinestill 50D. My film of choice for this project has been Portra 160. I jumped into this project not thinking of doing anything with it, really. It's uh, mainly to, it was an excuse to meet the local artists and photographers in my area. But hopefully maybe a gallery sometime in like, I don't know, three, four years from now, uh, something to showcase and be able to look back and say like, hey, we lived through this pandemic, you know? Big thanks to JP for allowing me to follow him around and kind of get an inside behind the scenes look at what he's up to in his project. If you want to see more of JP's work on Instagram, his Instagram is at jp.wtf. A lot of really cool film photography and a lot of really cool work in general. A big, huge thank you to everyone who continues to watch my videos, to people who like and subscribe to my channel, people who reach out and share their projects with me. I love all that. Thank you guys so much. If you have a project that you're doing in quarantine that you wanna share, something that you've been working on that's interesting, um, please let me know in the comments. I wanna see what you guys are working on. I wanna look at your Instagrams and and uh, talk to you guys because your stuff is really interesting and you guys always inspire me. The photo department has merch in the description. There's a link to a Teespring where you can get t-shirts and hoodies and they're really cool and a bunch of you have already bought them and y'all look really awesome wearing them. And if you wanna look awesome too and be warm this fall slash winter, you should go to my Teespring and buy a hoodie. And people will be like, what's the photo department? And you'll be like, <laughs> silly goose. Don't you know it's a YouTube channel? Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate all of you. And make sure you are wearing a mask and washing your hands, keeping six feet apart. Um, do not spread disinformation or conspiracy theories. Yeah, I love you. See you in the next one.